I did not grow up in faith. I did not believe in Jesus at all. In fact, it was more of a hobby of mine to make fun of Christians. Three hardcore years of depression. Um, really hit the point of suicide. Um, you know, multiple times driving 100 miles down the road, bawling my eyes out, about to turn into oncoming traffic. And by the way, you know that emptiness inside you? The only way you ever feel that is through a relationship with Jesus. I literally didn't go to the gym. I stopped doing business. I wasn't talking to like anybody. I was just depressed and I was watching Jesus sermons while I was smoking weed all day long. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. By many special requests, we are going to film Kyle's testimony video so you guys can get to know him a little bit better in his story and how he was brought to God. So I'm actually gonna go cook breakfast and leave this kid here alone with you guys um, <laughs> to tell you his story. Mm, you guys are stuck with me. Yeah, it's a really amazing, beautiful testimony. So I'm so excited that you're gonna get to share it. So y'all have fun. All right, bye-bye. Love, Love you. Love you. Whew, it's about time. No, I'm just kidding. Isn't Cayenne amazing? Just absolutely love her so much. She is just incredible. And I know all of you know this from watching her and following her and getting to know who she is. She's just truly somebody that I am so blessed to be able to run with in this life um, because of how much she loves God and how much she truly just wants to help people. It is inspiring to say the least. And I'm just so grateful to be a part of this, to be here with you guys, to get to share God's story, what he did in my life, and uh, just help you to see how much he loves you, you know, how much he truly just wants to provide for you and wants to help you to become who it is that he created you to be. My story is interesting. Um, for some of you may know, most of you probably don't, but I did not grow up in faith. I did not believe in Jesus at all. In fact, it was more of a hobby of mine to make fun of Christians who put their faith and hope in Jesus. It's wild, it's messed up, I know, but it's true. That's how I was. I just thought people put their faith in Jesus because they couldn't handle the real world, right? They couldn't handle it on their own, so they had to put their faith and belief in something that's not even real because it made them feel better about not being able to handle it, right? But anyways, yeah, so I grew up in Philadelphia, right outside of Philadelphia. Um, mom, dad, three sisters, you know, not perfect, but amazing. And I'm very blessed by them. I'm very blessed to say that I have, you know, two parents still in my life and that I have three sisters. Very blessed to say I always had a roof over my head, food on the table, clothes on my on my back. So for me, growing up, uh, I kind of bounced around from friend group to friend group trying to find my place. Didn't really know where I fit in, but I would always I always craved that real relationship, right? Now, I'm sure most of you can relate to this, but I always just crave like those real people in my life that would truly support me, back me up, be there for me, that I could have real conversations with, that we could talk about real things, be there for each other, to run in life together, right? And that was always tough to find. But because of that, I started bouncing around from group to group, trying to find my place. And uh, you know, some may say I was loyal to a fault, because I would get attached to somebody. I'd be like, wow, this is that person. And I would be like so loyal and like giving, and the next thing you know, I get taken advantage of and it would put me in like a really dark place of just hopelessness, you know, and confusion. And uh, this led to, you know, me getting into a lot of fights. Uh, I ended up, you know, through middle school into high school and into college getting into 50 plus fights, fist fights in my life. Going through many relationships, dating many different girls, trying to find, you know, that, that real person that I could run with. And it was just a mess, it was a mess. I was putting my hope and my faith in all the wrong places. It led me to getting into drinking. It led me to experimenting with drugs. It led me to doing things that I really didn't want to do. You know, looking back, I never wanted to do them but I did them because I thought it would fill me. It would fill that emptiness that I had inside me. I thought it would help me to feel connected and to feel part of something, right? Because at the end of the day, that's all we want is to feel like we're a part of something. It, it took me down a very hard road. I didn't have any faith. I more so had a lot of pride. I more so had 
uh, a pretty hidden big ego, right? It wasn't like you would meet me and be like, wow, you got a big ego. But like internally, I was like hiding it, but I had a pretty big ego. And it got in my way a lot. One thing, one pivotal moment really in my life was when I got into uh, the most serious relationship I have ever been in um, until Cayenne. We dated for five years, you know, dating through high school, going into college. Her and my best friends, my group, they all went to one school. I went to a different school. And then after one semester, I decided I'm going to transfer over to that school because I want to be with her and I want to be with my boys, right? So I did that. I made that move and uh, I made it for them, you know, because I didn't really care about school. I didn't know why I was going to school. I just wanted to be with them. And then when I get there, what happened was, you know, my girlfriend decided to join sorority, Greek life. Uh, my, my boys did the same thing and they joined a fraternity. And you know, I was not about it. I was like, I'm not joining this stuff. I'm not doing it. You guys have fun. But of course, when you know, all of your friends start joining something and you don't, there starts to become a separation. And I felt like I was getting left behind. So after the next semester went by, I decided I'm gonna join too because I couldn't go to the parties with them. I couldn't really be around my girlfriend or my friends because they were always around the Greek life, right? I joined the ones my boys joined and uh, I thought it was just gonna make everything better and it didn't. What happened was not too long later, my girlfriend, she, uh, she cheated on me. You know, she ended up meeting some fraternity guy and hooking up with him and ended up like dating the guy and just cheated on me. And um, you know, when I tried to figure out why I tried to get answers, she wouldn't give me any. It was just stop talking to me, leave me alone. And like, I was cut off. So whatever, I was like, you know what? Forget you, I got my boys. So I go to my friends, I'm living with them in the same apartment. I'm like, yo, you know, like looking for that support, that love. And they basically cut me off as well. And they chose her and they decided to stop hanging out with me, stop talking to me and just go every morning, wake up, go across the street, hang out with her all day. And I would have to sit there looking out the window, watching them go over there, hang out with her and her friends all day because she hung out with all the hot girls. So they basically chose girls over me. So I was like, you know what, forget you. Go hang out with the fraternity brothers. Um, but I just couldn't really connect with them. And after a couple parties, they actually told me to stop coming to the parties because she didn't feel comfortable coming and she brought the hot girls with her as well. But overnight, it seemed like I lost my girl, I lost my boys, the fraternity brothers. They dipped out on me as well. And yeah, I just felt like there was no point to life. I felt like there's no reason behind it. It shouldn't be this way, but it is this way. And I don't know why it's this way. So what's the point? I give up, right? So that took me down a very dark road. I call it the dark days. They turned into dark weeks, into dark months, into dark years. I probably went through about three hardcore years of depression. Um, really hit the point of suicide, um, you know, multiple times driving 100 miles down the road, bawling my eyes out, about to turn into oncoming traffic, which would have been so selfish. And praise the Lord, even though I didn't believe in him or know him, he put my mom in my head before I could ever do it every single time because he knew I could never do that to my mom. Just so many countless nights of drinking and doing drugs and just crying myself to sleep like a baby and just feeling so hopeless and helpless and, and I could not understand how people could be so cruel um, how the world could be the way that it is and you know I lost my faith and my hope in humanity altogether a couple years go by I'm now a fifth year senior in college two classes to go to graduate and um, I went on this family reunion to Maryland where a cousin of mine from Indiana she was there we only saw each other like once every four to eight years um, but she was there and we connect very well. And basically she, uh, long story short, called me out, you know, asked me why I was so miserable. I got really defensive, really mad. Like you never ask somebody who's depressed, why are you so miserable? Because they're not in the right mindset to receive that, right? So instead I got really defensive and mad, but after thinking about it and processing it, I, I realized, dang, like it's a good question. <laughs> Like, why am I this way? Like, what is going on? Why am I gonna live the rest of my life this way? Like, what can I do about this? So I asked her and she's like, listen, I met some people in Michigan. They changed my life. They can change yours too. You gotta come meet them. And thank God for Rachel. 
my cousin who told me this because this was just another really pivotal moment in my life that changed my life forever. And long story short from there, I said, okay, when can I come? A week later, after that trip, I went home and then I ended up driving up to Michigan from Philadelphia to meet these people that changed her life. And I got to really connect with these guys, Jamie and Luke and, you know, Christian, Alex, and uh, all these people, Tom and just, all these people, I got to meet all these people and connect with all these people. And um, I was just like, wow, like these are some real people. These are people that, you know, they're actually doing something with their life. They're actually helping people. They're actually trying to make the world better. Um, and, uh, you know, they were running this business. They had this whole movement going on, young pros. What are you gonna do? In Jesus' name, sunshine. In Jesus' name, sun shine right now yes let's go and then next thing you know um i had the opportunity to move out to michigan and actually move in with these guys it was actually time to go back to school and instead i decided to push it off and move to michigan off a leap of faith to live with a bunch of people i didn't really know to attempt to do what they were doing to get the life that they were living uh, they got me really diving into personal development self-help stuff as well as like business uh, training tactics and and skill sets building all that up and i became obsessed with it man i started studying all this stuff like you wouldn't believe uh, i i went <laughs> there was a point where i didn't leave my room for like a couple months straight because i was just obsessed with it and i was just studying and like literally transcribing everything I was listening to and reading and taking it all in and I thought this was going to be my uh, my my healing my my salvation uh, in a way but it only goes so far because even though I studied all this stuff and I learned all this stuff and I was no longer suicidal and I was no longer like really depressed I was still empty inside so I tried harder, I studied more, and, and I tried harder in business, I found more success, and I started traveling, and I started exploring the world and meeting new people and doing all this amazing stuff. And I was still empty inside. Like there was this nasty void that would not go away no matter what I did. The party and the drugs, the girls never worked. The business, the travel, the success never worked. The personal development, the self-help, all of it, it never worked. It only got me so far, but I was still empty inside. And I could not understand why, right? Remember all this time, I'm an atheist. Like I don't believe in a higher power, in God, a creator, nothing like that. Like I have no idea about what the purpose of being on earth is or any of it. So I, I got to this point where um, I thought, you know, this is as good as it's gonna get. And I just gotta suck it up and take it for what it is. The cool part is, is that even though I was at that point, God wasn't, you know, he was still looking over me. He was still trying to, you know, help me come to him, help me see that he is real and he is there. And I'd be lying if I said there weren't times throughout this journey where I started thinking maybe, right? Maybe there's something, maybe there's a creator. I know at one point I got to like, through personal development, self-help, I got to like the universe right? The universe has me, the universe will provide, you know, and I, that was probably like, uh, maybe a year or two before I, I really got encountered by Jesus. And I started, I guess, getting a little agnostic, right? He took me from atheist to agnostic. And then uh, what happened was that we went on this mission trip to Gary, West Virginia, where this was like five or six years ago. So the first couple of years, I just wasn't really about the, uh, the Bible time, the Jesus time, the God time, anytime they pulled it out, I was in the back with my buddy, like, look at these idiots, right? But come like that third year, I think, everything changed because we're still going to do the service. I love helping people. Uh, I love working in this area in Gary, West Virginia. Beautiful people, beautiful place, just really broken and run down. Um, so it, being able to serve them was incredible, but it was never about Jesus. It was just about me and that self-fulfillment, right? This time around, I had uh, this guy come up to me who was kind of running the whole thing. And he just asked me straight up, he said, so why don't you believe in Jesus? And I was very prideful with my answer, right? I made fun of Christians, you know, I had a big uh, ego when it came to this, very prideful in my answer. And I was just like, well, let me tell you. And I start going into all the reasons why I hated religion. And he stopped me. He said, I didn't say religion. I said, Jesus. And I said, what? <laughs> What's the difference, right? 
And that's when I learned about relationship versus religion. And he didn't go deep into it. It was just a couple minutes. And he said, Jesus loves you. He is alive. He wants a relationship with you. And by the way, you know that emptiness inside you? The only way you ever feel that is through a relationship with Jesus. Right? At that point, I'm like, who are you talking to? How do you know I have emptiness inside me? Because at this point, I got it masked. I got to cover it up, right? Personal development self-help is very good for covering things up. So I'm like, how does he know that? Now looking back, I knew God told him. He just turns around and walks away. And I was just like, what? And I couldn't get that thought out of my head. It's like the only way to fill this emptiness is through relationship with Jesus. Because I tried it through with everything else. Business, travel, personal development, drugs girls, drinking, partying, all of it, nothing, nothing ever worked. I said, what do I have to lose? Not much. What do I have to gain? A whole lot. We go back home, I'm staying with my buddy Jamie, I'm actually on the couch, um, and I got hit with so much depression going back home. It was wild, like back to where, like in a way where I was, not suicidal, but like really deep in depression. So. I remember I'm in the shower right when we get back and I said, you know what, let's do this thing. I said, you know what, this word for word. I said, all right, dude, if you're real, prove it to me. And I challenged him. <laughs> Disclaimer, if you're going to challenge God, get ready. He will show himself. He will prove you wrong. <laughs> and that's what he did. So I have this mentality, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it for a year. If it doesn't work after a year, I know it's not me that didn't work. It's it that didn't work. But if you quit before a year, I see that as you quit too soon, you didn't give it enough time, and it's you that didn't work. So I gave Jesus the same opportunity. I said, all right, I'm going to give you a year. So for the next, uh, well, it only took him three months. For the next three months, what I did was every single morning, every single day, I woke up, I grabbed my weed. I spark it, I smoke it, I type in Jesus sermons on YouTube, not knowing what to look up or what to expect or what I should be looking for. I just want to know who this Jesus character was and I press play. And after one YouTube, it would go to the next and the next and the next and the next. And I would do this all day, every day. No joke, I literally didn't go to the gym, I stopped doing business, I wasn't talking to like anybody, I was just depressed and I was watching Jesus sermons while I was smoking weed all day long. And it was crazy like it didn't feel like anything was changing or anything was happening kept doing it kept doing it and three months later i wake up one morning and i go for my weed and i didn't want it it's like that's weird i go to press play and i stopped and i was like something's different i felt different for the first time in my life i felt whole i felt full i started freaking out yo i was i was losing it i was scared because i was so comfortable feeling empty i was confused on what this feeling was, even though it felt so good. I remember running to one of my boys and I was telling them, dude, I'm freaking out, I'm freaking out. They're like, what's wrong? I said, nothing, that's the problem. And they're like, bro, that's Jesus. I was like, this is Jesus? They're like, yeah, I was like, I want more. I need more of Jesus. So I remember after that, I went back, uh, you know, to the place I was staying at. I fell on my knees. And I started crying out and just laying it all out and just professing that he's real and that he's alive and that he's with me and just in so much gratitude um, and thanksgiving, just laying my life out to him and saying, God, if you gave me this when I'm not obedient, what are you going to do for me when I am obedient? So I want to be obedient. I want to live for you. And I laid it all out. I remember I was bawling my eyes out, giving it to him. And he was just shredding, just shedding so much off of me at that time. It was crazy. Long story short, he hit me with this revelation of, okay, you want to be obedient to me? You're done with all of this. You're done business. You're done traveling. You're done with relationships outside of me. You're done with girls. You're done with partying, with all of it. The drugs, the drinking. You are moving home back to Philly with mom and dad, which by the way, I said I never moved back to Philly. I was done with that place. I never wanted to go back. And he goes, you're moving home with mom and dad to build a foundation in me. And I'm like, okay. Like, actually, I was like, crap, really? <laughs> but then I was like, okay, all right, let's do it. So from there, I moved back home with mom and dad. And it ended up being the best move I could ever make in my entire life. Like, it just beats the rest. I got to, I got to be still and just really dive in deep 
with a relationship with Jesus, building that strong foundation in him where he continued to renew me, transform me, and set me free from all of the chains that were holding me down to the point where he had me launch a ministry and help a young adults grow, group grow and really just help people find their identities in Christ, which is all this amazing stuff that we could dive deeper into. If you guys wanna know about this, just let us know, You know, drop some questions in there if you want us to answer those. Um, and we can definitely do more videos on this stuff but it truly was just such such a blessing, the best two years of my life. Um, and, and it set me up for everything that he's got before me today with Cayenne and um, all these exciting things that are happening. So, you know, when it comes down to it, it's just incredible to realize, truly realize how God is real, he is alive, he loves you so much and all he wants is to build a relationship with you. He's just waiting for you to initiate that relationship and just to trust him with it, to surrender in joyful obedience and receive the abundant life in Christ that he freely wants to give you. And guys, I'm just a testament to that. All glory to God. Everything that I just shared with you is all from him. And, and it's amazing because, you know, he's doing the same thing in you guys as well and building this incredible story in your lives to share with other people um, that will also glorify him in such incredible ways. So with that being said, I love you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Um, like I said, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below. Give this video a like, a subscribe, follow the channel, stay tuned. We got more coming and uh, we just appreciate you and love you guys so much and uh, look forward to speaking to you next time.